Alléluia, 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 Alléluia. All who believe in the Son have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had fed the crowd with the five loaves, he said to the people, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me. And anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus says today, and this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that the Father has given me, but raise it up on the last day. It's another revelation of Jesus here of the promises of resurrection for all of us. Another revelation of the will of, that the will, of, the will of God who sent his son Jesus to reconcile us with the Father that we may be like Jesus and be raised from the dead. You know, God wants us to be with him. He wants us to be with him for eternity, forever. And God has the power to raise us up from the dead and give us eternal life. And this hope, this possibility, is given to every single human person. That's what we continue to celebrate during this Easter season. But, you know, the resurrection from the dead is not simply an event that we can look forward to. Oh, it's going to happen one day. This resurrection has to inform how we live our lives today. You know, in the creed, we don't just profess our belief that Jesus, of Jesus' resurrection. We say, I believe in the resurrection of the body. It means that we're not just souls that are trapped inside of our body waiting to be released. The resurrection, in the resurrection, Jesus shows us the importance of our body and how God will raise us up on the last day, body and soul. I believe in the resurrection of the body. And it's ultimately a mystery what that will look like, but it does mean that our bodies mean something. What we do with them here on earth matters. And the resurrection of Jesus is the basis of all that we believe as Catholics and as Christians about the dignity of the human person. You know, because we're created in the image and likeness of God, we have this inherent dignity that no one can take away. Pope Benedict said it like this in 2010, that human dignity is a fundamental principle which faith in the crucified and risen Jesus Christ has always defended, especially when in respect of the simplest and most defenseless people. It is disregarded. Faith in the crucified Jesus and risen Jesus Christ has always defended. So the resurrection of Jesus changes everything for us. It changes the meaning of our lives and gives us, all of us, all whom the Father has given the Son, that dignity, that inherent dignity. And I say all this because last week the Vatican came out with this new document. You might have heard of it. I think it's important to keep track of these things sometimes. But this new document called Dignitas Infinita. So, infinite dignity. It reminds us of the infinite dignity that each one of us has 
that finds its roots in the resurrection of Jesus. And so we might ask ourselves, well, you know, why do we have to be reminded of this constantly? You know, we know this. We know that every life matters from womb to tomb, all that. Well, perhaps we know it, but our world doesn't always know it or doesn't always live it out. It's something we have to keep proclaiming. Even right here in Canada, with its newly proposed laws on euthanasia and even you know, the recent history, at least in Canadian history, of the residential schools and how both the state and the church did not uphold that truth all the time of the dignity of the human person with respect to indigenous peoples. So we're in this time of reconciliation, in this time of healing. Actually, there's a concert here on Friday, a fundraiser concert for that indigenous reconciliation fund to keep reminding ourselves that human dignity is important. And of course, the saint we commemorate today, Saint Kateri, is a model for that reconciliation and a model for how her faith in the risen Jesus informed how she lived and how she dedicated her life to our Lord, a life of virginity. Her mother actually was, this was interesting, her mother was actually from Algonquin origin whereas her father was from Mohawk, Mohawk origin. So these two groups historically were kind of enemies. Her mother actually became Catholic and her whole life, Kateri wished, Saint Kateri wished to live for Jesus. She actually refused to get married in order to devote her life more fully to God. That was something her, her adoptive parents wanted her to do. She was adopted earlier on as well. And so it was her aunt and uncle, they wanted her to get married, but she, she wanted to more devote her life to Jesus, a life of virginity. So that decision, in a sense, alienated, alienated her from her family, from her adoptive parents, even from the, the goods of this world, too. She was kind of impoverished by that. She then became baptized in 1676 and became a consecrated virgin shortly before she died in 1680. And so today, let us ask for her intercession as we continue to pray here in Canada for reconciliation between the church and indigenous communities, as well as for our country to recognize that infinite, inherent dignity of every human person, no matter what age, cultural background, politics, or religious beliefs. Amen.